iPhone, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. Uh, we're looking at a message today called the forgiveness of God, and uh, it's good to see you. So uh, let's pray. Father God, we come before you today, and we confess our sin and our failure in the wickedness of our own hearts and dear God we pray for your forgiveness today and your cleansing and Father we pray as we look to your word that you will bless and Father I pray for the Holy Spirit to be in this message I pray that you take the words and apply it to our hearts and I pray Lord that we would draw close to you through these words in your name and for your glory Amen. Okay. <coughs> okay. Now, if you like to turn to your Bible and um, I remember training with um, <coughs> some missionaries in Ireland and staying with them and the mother of one of the missionaries um, was going out for shopping and asked the son who was in his 20s to make sure the chicken was okay because the chicken was in the cooker cooking but anyhow, when she went out with her husband, the young man asked me uh, to make sure the chicken was okay. But I went and fell asleep that afternoon. And when the parents came back, there was smoke in the kitchen. And there was um, an almighty shouting from the mother to the son saying why didn't you look after the chicken um, and the point is that I felt very guilty because I'd let everybody down we all can feel guilt at times in our lives for whatever reason the question is how can we be forgiven and that is what we're looking at today so if you turn to Psalm 51 we read have mercy on me O God according to thy loving kindness according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgression wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightst be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest behold I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me behold thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean wash me and I shall be whiter than snow Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities, creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors the ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from bugless, O God. Thou God of my salvation and my tongue will sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. 
do good in thy pleasure unto Zion, build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with burnt offering, whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thy altar. So that's what we're looking at today. Um, I'm just doing some Bible studies today and a few videos and then that's it then. Um, I'm going to spend um, time just doing stuff that I want to do. And, um, but I just want to get some Bible studies out of the way today. And maybe a few other videos. Uh, if you want to know what I'm doing in the next few weeks and months ahead, this is the channel to come to, Lollard Preachers. So pass the word around. King David, in the context of this psalm, should have been in battle, should have been in the Christian life, as it were, but he, he should have been at war. But he stayed at home, and as he stayed at home, he was on a rooftop, and he looked over, and he saw Bathsheba, and there she was married, and she was married to Uriah, so he sent Uriah off to war, knowing that Uriah was going to get killed, and then he had his wicked way. David had his wicked way with Bathsheba. There's a lesson there that if we're not in the battle of the Christian life, spiritual battle, if we're not serving God, if we're not busy for God, then if we come out of, uh, out of service for whatever reason, uh, th there are times when we need to rest. But if we come out of the service of God for any other reason, and to rest or maybe we have to do something for family or whatever but if we're just coming out because we don't want to serve God then we're opening ourselves up to temptation because rather than be concentrating on spiritual things we will get sidetracked like David got sidetracked with Bathsheba so if you turn to 2 Samuel To Samuel chapter 12 verse 7 and Nathan said to David thou art the man thus saith the Lord God of Israel I anoint thee king over Israel and I deliver thee out of the hand of Saul and I give thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah and if thou had been too little I would moreover have given unto thee such and such a thing wherein hast thou despised the commandments of the Lord to do evil in this sight thou hast killed Uriah Uriah sorry yes thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thy house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thy eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with the wives in sight of thy, this son. This thou did it secretly, but I will do the thing before all Israel and before the sun. David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also I put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. So Nathan the prophet comes and he confronts David, and David is quite, Okay, I'm a sinner. I've done this wrong. If we're children of God, there is a point at which when we're sinning, God will confront us with our sin. Especially if you're in ministry, especially if you are a servant of God. Make no bones about it, God will confront you with your sin. 
And if you're a Christian and a child of God, God will confront you concerning your sin. And if you are not a Christian or a, not a believer, God will confront you with your sin. On the day of judgment, there will be a day where he will confront you. But for those who follow God, if we sin, God will confront our sin. There is the reality of the sinful life. Psalm 51, 1 and 2. There are many people today who claim to be Christians, but claim that they are not sinners, that they are good people. If you are one of those so-called Christians, you don't understand Christianity. You're not converted. If you think that all Christians are good, and that you are good, and that you're not a sinner, and that Christians are not a sin sinners, then you've not really understood Christianity. You are not saved. You are not born again. I know that you might be angry at what I'm saying, but that's a fact. You're not born again. For someone who is born again knows that they are a sinner. Isaiah, uh, Psalm 51 verse 1, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. David acknowledges that he's a sinner. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. David knows that he is a sinner. It is the first rule of knowing God to know yourself as a sinner. Without that knowledge you will never ever know God. If you turn to Psalm 6 verse 2 We read, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak, O Lord. Heal me, for my bones are vexed. My soul is also so vexed, but thou, O Lord, how long? Verse 6, I am weary with my groaning. All night I make my bed to swim. I water my couch with tears. They, 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 this psalmist is broken because of his sin. Psalm 32, verse 1. Psalm 32 verse 1 Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not in iniquity, and whose spirit there is no guile. You see, the scriptures point to our sin. You turn to 32 verse 4 For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me, my moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Selah. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. And he shows you your sin, and you have to acknowledge your sin. If you do not, you will never know God. You'll be lost. Psalm 102, verse 3. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as an earth. Why? Because he knows he's a sinner. My friend, if you want to know God, you've got to know you're a sinner. If you for one moment think that you are good and that your goodness will get you into heaven, you, you, you are lost. You don't understand the Christian faith. You don't understand the first thing about God. I know that you're probably upset with what I'm saying, but you don't. You cannot understand a knowledge of God until you understand that God is holy and you're not holy. That God is pure and you're a sinner. Until you're honest with yourself, until you look into the mirror and face the mirror and realize who you really are before God, that you are a sinner, you're never going to be saved. 
the vast majority of people think they're okay. The vast majority of people think they are fine. But they are not okay. They are not fine. We are not fine. We are all sinners. That is the first lesson to learn if we're going to know God. It is a lesson you will not learn or find in the annals of philosophy. You can read Hegel and Kant and David Hume. You can read any philosopher you want. You will not find the idea that you need to acknowledge you're a sinner before God. Only in the scripture do we find clear teaching that you are a sinner and that you need God. Secondly, not only are we sinners, we've got to acknowledge that we're sinners and turn away from our sin. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, 13. To Samuel chapter 12 verse 13 and David said unto Nathan I have sinned against the Lord and Nathan said unto David the Lord also have put away thy sin thou shalt not die when Nathan confronted David David acknowledged that he had done wrong before Bathsheba and repented and turned away from that sin. So if you turn to Psalm 51 verse 3, we read, For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. You see, he admits that he's a sinner. Psalm 28, 13. Psalm 28, 13. Sorry about this. Got the wrong psalm here. Sorry about this. Wrong, wrong uh, psalm. We turn to one John chapter one verse nine. One John. One John chapter one verse nine. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. If we confess, he will forgive. I um, I was in a particular city the other day evangelizing, and. This lady uh, who was from, Isle, I think, Ireland or whatever, she's Catholic anyway. And I went to the local uh, pub uh, to read my Bible and I had a pint. I don't normally have a pint. And um, people were quite curious why I was in the pub drinking a pint and reading my Bible. And um, this young lady who was a Catholic walked past and she said, oh, you read your Bible? I said, yeah, I'm just trying to relax for a few minutes. The other guys are out there uh, evangelizing, but I, I just need a bit of a rest. So we got talking and she told me that she wasn't a very good Catholic. That At the beginning of a Catholic journey, she um, got involved with uh, somebody and uh, she didn't get married and you know she had a child out of wedlock and all the rest of it you know you don't have to be good 
You just have to acknowledge you're a sinner. And we all make mistakes. We all fail. We we all don't live up to what we should live up to. The point is that David here began to admit where his sin was, turn away, and when he did that, in that 1 John chapter 1 verse 9, we find forgiveness from God. Again, 1 John 1 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I don't know about your life. You might be a Christian, and you might have gone out with a, a man or a woman that's not a Christian. You might have slept with them and you're not married. And you think to yourself, well, that's it. My faith is gone now. I'm, I'm not a Christian anymore. Or if I'm a Christian, I'm, I'm certainly not going to be forgiven again. I don't know what, what sins you've committed. And I don't need to know and I don't want to know. But what I do know is that if you have fallen into sin, whether a Christian or, or not, whether you're not a Christian, that there's always a way back to God. That God offers forgiveness, but it, it comes at the point where we have to acknowledge our own failure and sin. Again, I'll read that verse again, 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess, we got to confess, we got to acknowledge, God, I'm a sinner. God, I failed. God, I've not done what I should have done in this area. And we have to confess, we have to be honest. It's very hard to be honest with ourselves. It's very hard to confess before God. But it's the only way to know God. It's the only way back to God is to confess. And if we confess and turn away from that sin, God will have us back. But we've got to confess. Psalm 34, 18. Psalm 34, verse 18. The Lord said, Is nigh unto the but to them that are of a broken heart, and save as such as be of contrite spirit. Notice, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such to be of contrite spirit. If you come to God in a broken way and say, God, I, I've messed up here, and you're broken about it, he will not turn you away. I don't care what your sin is. I don't care if you've been doing a sin for years and years and years if you come to God and you're broken he will hear your prayer Psalm 147 verse 3 Psalm 147 verse 3 he healeth the broken in heart and bind up their wounds you covered in sin today? Are you are you immersed in failure today? Well, read that verse, Psalm 147, verse three. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. God is going to bind up your wounds. You say, well, I did this, I did that, and how's it going to turn out this way? How's it going to turn out that way? He binds up the wounds and God knows how to do it my friend he knows how to bind up your wounds better than you do you don't walk at your pace you don't walk at your it, it don't happen at your behest it doesn't happen in your way but believe you me God will bind up your wounds but he does it in his time in his way and if you come to him and repent and turn to him he's going to bind up your wounds He's going to bring a healing to your heart. He's going to bring He's going to bring a peace and a strength and a hope and a joy. And a, he's going to do it. It might take time, but he'll do it. He's going to bind up your wounds. God has his timing. And he's going to do it. 
and he will do it in your life. Matthew chapter 9, 13. Matthew chapter 9, verse 13. Go ye and learn what means I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Christ says, I, I, I want mercy. I want to give mercy. And he, and he wants to give you mercy today. God don't want to pulverize you to the ground. He wants to lift your head up and he wants you to have mercy today. Thomas Watson, a Puritan, says, Repentance is a grace of God's Spirit. Just, uh, Repentance is a grace of God's Spirit where a sinner is inwardly humbled and visibly reformed. Thomas Watson, a Puritan. <coughs> Philip Yancey, Jesus reserves his hardest words for the hidden sins of hypocrisy, greed and legalism. <coughs> Excuse me, Leonard Ravenhill, the world has lost the power to blush over its vice, the church has lost the power to weep over it. Johann Ardent, Johann Ardent, heart suffering because of sin is the best proof the Holy Spirit dwells in your heart. <coughs> Excuse me. John Stott says sin and the child of God are incompatible. They may occasionally meet. They cannot live together in harmony. John Munkey, you will never be able to speak against sin if you're if you're entertained by it. We have to repent. Acts chapter three verse nineteen. Acts chapter three verse nineteen. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out where the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord as we repent there will be times of refreshing in our life Chip Brogan says it is not that we need more power but that we need more brokenness when we are properly broken we will we will find the indwelling Christ is more than sufficient. A little aside, you who uh, are pastors of big mega churches, what you need most of all in your church is not more money. It is not a bigger worship band. What you need is repentance. Psalm 51 verse 17 Psalm 51 verse 17 The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart O God thou will not despise So we've looked that we're at sinners that goes without saying. If you argue against that, you don't understand the Christian faith. Secondly, we've looked at the need to repent. That if we turn and confess, God is ready to meet us in forgiveness. If we're broken about our sin, he will come and bind up our wounds. And then God is ready to forgive. Let's turn to Psalm 51 verse 7. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. 
Verse 9, hide thy face from my sins, and what? Blot out my iniquities. God will blot out your sin and forgive you. Hebrews chapter 9, 22. You see, all your sin, whatever that sin is, instead of you being punished for that sin, Jesus Christ was punished in your place. Hebrews 9.22 And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission. It's the blood of Christ that cleanses you. It's the blood of Christ that forgives you. For in the blood of Christ it was shed for you at the cross. Revelation 1.5 From Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He washed us from our sins in his own blood. Hebrews 9, 14. Hebrews 9, 14. Hebrews 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ who brought the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God? Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. <coughs> Excuse me. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. One Peter chapter 1, verse 19. But with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. It is a precious blood because it was the Savior's blood where he died on that cross on your behalf. God was going to judge you on judgment day and send you to hell because you sinned and you couldn't pay your debt back. So what God did is came down in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ was perfect, holy and divine and human. And there it was prophesied that he would die in your place. And as they whipped him, as they put a crown of thorns on his head and as they nailed him, it should have been you and me being nailed to go to hell. But he died in your place that you might be living and saved today. Count Sissendorf says, Our method of proclaiming salvation is this, to point out to every heart the loving Lamb who died for us, and although he was the Son of God, offered himself for our sins by the preaching of his blood and of his love unto death, even the death of the cross. And, and that means that any sin that you have done even if you've got a hard heart against God even if you're bitter against God and angry against God even if you wanted to destroy God and destroy his servants you come to God and say Lord I'm a sinner and you come to the cross you can be washed and cleansed and you can be forgiven and you can have a relationship with the living God that's for you that offer is for you and I would beg you to consider that offer to consider the love of the Lamb to consider what he did for you at the cross I would beg and plead with you to turn to him and to trust in him because that is the only way to know God through the blood of Christ and there is no way in heaven and earth for you to know God but through that blood Psalm 51 verse 10 Psalm 51 verse 10 Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a spirit within me. God will give you a clean heart by the Holy Spirit. Ezekiel 36 25 As you believe in the cross, you become born again. The Holy Spirit comes to dwell in your heart. Ezekiel 
36, 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I clean you. God will clean you. Even the worst can be forgiven. Acts chapter 9 verse 21. Acts chapter 9 verse 21. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this that destroyed them which called on the name in Jerusalem? And came hither for the intent that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priest. But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is the very Christ Saul who became the apostle Paul. Saul was a blasphemer and he was a murderer and yet he was saved, he became born again. If you turn to Christ today and, and ask him forgiveness, he will forgive you. You turn to Psalm 51 verse 13 and 18. Psalm 51 verse 13 Then will I teach transgressors the ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Verse 18 Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion, build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Once you come to know the forgiveness of God, once you come to know the cleansing of God, then go and build the people of God up. Go and preach, go and evangelize, go and do the work of God. Even if you're a young Christian, go and serve the Lord. Go on a mission trip, go on a short-term mission. Go and join the youth group or the, or the um, whatever group that is doing evangelism or mission or whatever. But go and build the house of God when God forgives you. So you might be a skeptic today and you've had a blog show where you've attacked Christianity and now you've come to know Jesus. What should you do? Set up a blog show defending Christianity. Set up a website defending Christianity. You're a skeptic today and you've come to know Jesus. That's what you can do. But my friends, however sinful you have been, David was sinful. He committed murder to get a woman and God called him on it. But God forgave him when he repented. Whatever sin we do, God will call us on it, believer or unbeliever. But when we be honest with God and come to him and say, Lord, I did mess up. Lord, I did fail. Lord, I, I'm not what I should have been. And you'll not find a God who'll rub your nose in it. You'll not find a God who'll stamp his feet on you. You'll find a God who is tender and gracious and will bind up your wounds. That's the God that you'll find. And again, I want to say to those people out there who are angry against God, who are angry against Christianity, who are out to try and prove Christianity wrong actively on blog shows and whatever I want you to know this that the love of God is open to you if only you would be honest with yourself you are a sinner you can stamp your feet you can get angry you can laugh and mock whether you like it or not you are a sinner and unless you confess your sin and go to the cross and ask for forgiveness, then you're going to be lost. And you can argue all day long and try to prove Christianity all day long with all your arguments. But you know your conscience bears witness to you that you are wrong. And you know that you need to repent. 
And I would ask you that you would repent. That you would come and know the forgiveness of God. And I kid you not, you can have a relationship with God. Where you can know forgiveness and peace and know that he's with you. Thank you for listening. I'm going to just be quiet for a minute. And give you time just to think about that message. And give you an opportunity to repent. Just come before the Lord and, and, and if you're a skeptic today, because I know most of my listeners are skeptics, wouldn't it just give you time to think about what I've said? And if what I've said spoken to you, then bow your knee and ask him to forgive you today. Ask him to come and cleanse you and wrap his arms around you and uh, wash you clean. And he will do. Let's come before the Lord. Almighty God, we acknowledge that, that you are holy and great and that we're nothing. We acknowledge that you came and died on a cross for our sin, that you were crucified on our behalf so that we would not come under judgment. And Lord, we acknowledge today that we sin and fail. We acknowledge that we have let you down. So God, I pray that you would forgive us, that you would cleanse us and have mercy upon us. And we ask God that you would help us to walk your way and to serve you. We ask this, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Amen. 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 Okay, I'm going to be doing another video. Uh, go to a couple of more videos. Uh, maybe a couple of apologetic videos as well. Interspersed with Bible teaching and stuff like that. I'm just making some videos and then um, I get that uh, long break that I, I need to have. Um, but I just wanted to put some stuff up and then spread it around uh, later as I'm taking time out over the next few weeks. So Thank you for listening and God bless you and have a lovely day today. God bless you.